Hello, what's going on? God bless everyone. I'm so happy to be here again to encourage people to live their life um, for the Lord. Um, so, uh, it was kind of late on my mind and my mom, she was talking to me about this like uh, maybe like two weeks ago. And she was like, you know, since you're married, you should talk about marriage for people that is married. And I was like, mm, I was kind of like hesitant. And I don't know why, because I'm like, you know what? That is true. I mean, I talk about a lot of topics, but I don't actually talk about marriage a lot. And I do have um, a lot of people that I love that that are married. And, um, and they definitely um, is looking for um, something... Um, that's going to get them inspiration and that something is knowing what God wants them to do in their marriage. So I like to start off to say that um, people that's married, this is for you. Um, I pray that this word will be a blessing in you guys' life. So I am going to start off with Genesis chapter 2 verse 24 therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one and one is together so anything that you guys do is as one it's not him over there or her over there you guys are together. You guys make decisions together. You guys eat together. <laughs> you guys, you know, when it comes to the kids, make decisions on, you know, how you guys want to raise your kids together. That is as one. What is a marriage according to God? He expects us to dedicate ourselves to the relationship and to recognize our responsibilities duties and loyalties both for our spouse and to God so he expects us to do all these things when it comes to marriage marriage is very important to God God honors marriage and um sometimes it's kind of sad that some people don't take their marriage really seriously um but those that know the word and doing God's will, they want a successful marriage. So I bless you guys that's doing God's will and honoring your wife and your husband. What are three proposals of marriage? Companionship, passion, and prosperous. So that is the three companions and purpose. That's one of the three. Actually, yeah, purpose is one of them. That is one of them too. So we should make that four, but okay. Ephesians chapter 533. If your marriage is filled with conflict, don't give up. This scripture instructs a husband to love his wife as he loves himself and that his wife must respect him. And... A lot of times, I feel like the reason why um, marriage do have a lot of conflict because both partners don't respect each other. You know, the woman is pretending to be the man. The man is pretending to be the woman. You know, we don't know where this is coming from. You know, um, what, I, what I learned from being married is choosing my battles. You know, um, I tell a lot of people that. Um, I learned how to step back in a lot of situations. That's something that 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 had to um I must say I came a long way because there were times when I was like really like this is before me and my husband got married, but th there were times when I was like, kind of like bulking against him. Everything he does, I would catch attitudes and I'm like, I'm going to do things this way. I'm going to do things that, that way. But when you get married, you cannot just be doing what you want to do. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's, that's considered a lot of conflict, you know? But when you do have conflict, go to God, pray with one another 
and God will be in the midst of your marriage because God loves marriage. See, the enemy don't want people to be married. The enemy is telling people that, oh, it's okay not to be married. We can just be boyfriend and girlfriend. I don't want, I don't, I don't respect that. That's me personally. I don't feel like, and this is my personal feelings, you know, I don't feel like a, a woman or man should just want to just live with each other and say, okay, that's okay. You know, um, there should be some type of commitment there, you know, and the commitment is with God almighty first you know that's why he said marriage is very important you know and it goes back like he said to genesis you know god made us to be with each other woman and man he made us to love one another and our husbands as women that you know they are our backbones and vice versa and basically when it's conflict you have to know when to say you know what i'm gonna keep working at this i'm gonna keep working at this and if you love that person so much you're going to keep working at it. now i'm not trying to say that you have to take an abuse mental abuse physical abuse god don't want us to be in no marriage like that we can leave but if you guys are arguing and that's the trick of the enemy arguing and fighting all the time. You guys have to start praying. Prayer goes a long way. I'm a witness. Trust me. I, I, I had so many problems before I got married. Now I know how to treat my husband. Now I know how to be that woman of God. I pray to God all the time on how to teach me how to be a woman of God, how to respect my husband, how to love my husband, you know, how to choose my battles, you know. And there's some things that Sometimes I look at my husband and I be like, mm, you know, I don't like that. But we have to, as women, learn how to trust our husband. Trust is, is one of the big things I feel like in marriage too. Because we're so drawn on by the past that a lot of times, I was going to say sometimes, but a lot of times we kind of tend to think about the past a lot. And that's what... Um, withhold us down you know and god don't want us to be held down a bond so you know we break that curse as we speak in the name of jesus bonded marriages you know of, of thinking about the past and, and thinking about all things that happened you have a choice whether you want to be with that person or not mm -hmm. and god also put out there therapy for us therapy is very important if you choose to get therapy while you are married that's totally okay because that's god doing god wants us to get help he wants us to seek help you know so but the main thing he wants us to seek is him okay so this is ephesians chapter 5 33 if your marriage is full oh, no, i think we did that already I'm, i think i was so busy worrying about conflict I was like, mm, you know, because I had to get back to this. Cause I, I have been in so much conflict, you know, just in general. I definitely learn how to speak to God. Conflict is a trick of the enemy. It ruins marriage. So I'm going to keep going on. Can prayer save a marriage? And yes. Like we was talking about. It does. Prayer works. You ask a God to intervene in your marriage and help. And also your partner takes steps to, imp to improve to be a better person. So prayer, that, that's the first thing to do. A lot of times if you and your husband and um, are arguing, vice versa, you know what you do? And this is what I do too. You step in your private closet or whatever place you pray at and you talk to God and God will handle everything. Trust me. That's like one of the most important things. Um, I feel like people, um, they don't really understand, but prayer is very important. Now, this is a really good one. How do I let God heal my marriage? Hmm. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to name six things. 
or six ways I must say you can let God heal your marriage. First, pray the best way to fight any battle and that is on your knees. Prayer is first. Second, be still. When fighting God's battle with him, sometimes you can do the most good by just being still and relaxing. Sometimes God wants us to keep quiet. He wants us to just keep quiet in the spirit. You know, I had to learn that because I'm so used to moving and doing this and that. Sometimes he just wants us to, to relax. So he can be able to talk with us. Number three, trust God. That's the most. You have to You have to put your trust in God. Without trust, you, you have nothing. You know, we have to have faith small as a mustard seed, God is saying. That's very important. Trust is important. Number four, face the battle. You know, face it. Go into it. You know, when you're on your knees, face it. When And you know what? I must say, also facing a battle to me is humbling yourself. And the reason why I say that is because facing a battle don't always mean pulling out something. You're like a sword. Oh, I got to do this. Facing a battle can also say, you know what? I'm going to face this battle. I'm going to humble myself and I'm going to apologize to my man. I apologize to my husband a lot of times. You know, um, and to me, it's just to the point where it's not about who's right or who's wrong. It's about just, first of all, the Holy Spirit would definitely, I mean, especially if you are doing God's will, he'll talk to you. You know, apology is very important. You know, there's so many people that leave here today or tomorrow. People don't take this seriously and they do not apologize. Apology is, is, is the most important thing in God's eye. Forgiveness. So, all that goes together, I must say. Number five, let God do the talking. Like I said, just relax. Let him speak to you. Let him... You know, be the one that heals what's going on in your mind and your thoughts. You know, a lot of times the truth and the enemy don't want you to be married. He put those thoughts in your head and say, you know what? You don't need to be married. You need to get the, uh, need to get a divorce. You know, you need to leave. You need to cheat on your husband. You need to cheat on your wife. You're not happy. You've been with this person for over three or five, 20 years, and y'all do the same thing. No, I, I bond it as I speak in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's the trick of the enemy. And we're not going to allow the trick of the enemy to come in our marriage. Because God, like I said, he honors marriage. And number six, give thanks. Give thanks to God. Give thanks and say, Lord, I thank you for my husband. I thank you for my wife. I thank you for my wife, you know, cooking for me, cleaning, whatever she does, working overtime. He said, I thank you for my husband, you know, that comes in and 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 love me and treat me like a queen and 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 treat me like how God would treat me. And that is the most important thing that we have to realize we want to be treated right a, a man want to be treated right in a relationship and a woman want to be treated right in a relationship and what i mean by that a husband and a wife wants to be treated right so we have to learn as husband and wife to treat each other with respect there's going to be some things that we're not going to agree that our mates do you know that's that's typical that's normal but if you got to like i said see therapy or um if you got to you can talk to a pastor um there's times when our people reach out to me and um and sometimes because i've seen it so much um people might say well no that's 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 not going on and this is not going on in my relationship whatever but sometimes and I, I'm not a therapist, but when you've been through a lot of things in your life, you just already see what's going to happen. 
So you're not telling that person anything to hurt their feelings. You're telling them, especially if you're married, you know, I think um, talking to a person that is married and you're married, it works. I know sometimes people might feel uncomfortable and they might say, well, you know, I don't feel comfortable talking to you, whatever the case might be. But if, if you have two married people that's bond with God, that loves the Lord, that's serious about their marriage, it's not the wrong with you asking some questions about, you know, how, how do you think I should um, work this out or work that out? It's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think a lot of people, they get scared, you know, and a lot of times they get scared because they're scared of themselves, you know, but we have to learn as married people to open up. I'm not saying tell all your business. I'm not, in, you know, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in telling all your business because people have a tendency to um, talk. And the Lord, we're not, we're not, the Lord don't love that. That's the book of James, you know, read that, you know, just talk oh, just a lot. But if you know somebody and you know that you're comfortable talking with them, it's nothing wrong talking. Like I say, you want to see therapy, talk to your pastor, you know, if you have a close mother or father, but reach out because the trick of the enemy don't want you to speak to anybody when you're going through marriage problems. He wants you to keep everything in, you know, and I have a friend, one thing I can say about her, um, I love her to death because she speaks about her marriage. You know, she speaks about what's going on with her, you know, what's bothering her and things like that. And we talk and, and what we do is we get together and God be in the midst of it. And, you know, we pray and we do a lot of things that God want us to do as far as marriage. So to end this, um, I just want to say a prayer. And um, I just want to open up people's eyes as Mary and say, don't give up. Do not give up. God loves marriage. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you today, God. We thank you today, Father, for just teaching us how to love one another as husband and wife, how to hold on to each other, Father. The enemy is busy, Father. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. We just Thank you, Lord. I pray that this message, this message help, you know, a couple that's going through it in their marriage and they need someone to turn to, Lord. And the one that we need to turn to is you, Father. So, Lord, I just wanted to thank you, Lord, for just even allowing me to get this message out, Lord. Lord, none of us is perfect, God. We all make mistakes, Father. But one thing you do honor, you honor marriage and you honor people that that go out there and do your will and practice what they preach, Father. So, Lord, I just want to send all, you know, my blessings, God. I ask you to bless everyone that's married, Father, abundantly, Father. Bless them with their finances. Bless them to have love in their heart, Father. Lord, we bless them to hold on to each other when things are just feels like they just don't want to be with each other, Father. I ask you to be in the midst of their marriage, Father. Lord, we love you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for dying on the cross for our sins, God. Lord, we ask you anything that's in our hearts, Father, that you will forgive us, Father, that we, that, that we will forgive our brethren, Father. We ask you this, God, in Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Shalom, shalom, shalom. God bless everyone. I'm sorry I probably took up too much time. I normally don't go so long, but um, doing this was very important to me because I am a married woman, and um, I know how sometimes marriage can be, but I tell you this, God is in the, in the midst of, so I just want to thank you guys for even just listening to me. Um, it's such an honor to to, um, to put these videos out and to encourage people. I want to say God bless and you guys have a blessed day. Shabbat shalom. Bye-bye.